Hey guys, today on the podcast, JC sits down with Dr. Phil Perlman for another episode of The Money Game. Technical analysis is the study of the behavior of the market and therefore market participants. So understanding the psychology of investors goes a long way in the interpretation of different market dynamics. Today, JC and Phil talk about the old cliche, everything happens for a reason. When the truth is, it doesn't. In fact, it doesn't at all. I'll let the boys take it away. Enjoy. So, Mr. Perlman, I've been hearing it my whole life. They tell me that everything happens for a reason. And uh, I just, I have a tough time swallowing that. I think you probably do too, if I know you better. Nothing happens for a reason. We're a speck on a speck spinning in a gargantuan entropic universe. <sighs> what, what? What's the reason, <laughs> you know? So I have no idea, but there's no reason. I mean, nothing happens for a reason. You Don't know. you need to be like really self-centered and egotistical to think that the universe is revolving around you? You are relevant to nothing? Yeah, exactly. Is it a lack of understanding what that, what, what that actually means? Is it people just repeating things that they've heard before? It's not, it's not necessarily their fault. It doesn't mean they're egotistical. It's just a fear of nothingness and also this desire that we have to try to understand what's going on, even though we don't know what's going on. I mean, you think about the birth of religion, it's the same thing. There was like a, you know, all of a sudden they made up stories about the beginning of the universe. They had no idea. It was way before the Big Bang. Nobody had an idea. So we just as humans just want to try to understand stuff, even when we don't understand it. And when we don't, we just make up things. And, and what about the randomness of it all? You know, right? It's completely random. And but see, here's one really, really important part of that, though. So you would think, you know, one implication of this randomness uh, and, and meaninglessness is that, well, you know, why should we have any morality at all? You know, we can just go act like animals, right? We could just go out and just, you know, take anything we want, punch anybody we want, who cares? That's an implication. And yet, as far as animals go, we, ha we do have an, a moral compass somewhere built in, whether it's space, you know, whether it's survival, you know, whether it's an evolutionary thing, there is a compass inside our brain somewhere that is pointing us in the direction or at least helping us to aspire to have some moral sense. And we all know what's good and we all know what's bad. And that is sort of, you know, you can look at it as being ironic. You could look at it as being sort of the best of the best of humanity. I don't know, but it's there. So despite the meaninglessness, that that is still there, you know, that 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 moral fiber and that aspiration to 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 be good, do good uh, is still there, even though we're a speck on a speck spinning uh, in a gargantuan and tropic universe. All right. So I'll try to take the other side. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. We do here. We try to challenge. And, you know, the argument would be, you know, how, how fortunate things have transpired because of something that. Uh, at the time could have been perceived as a negative. Uh, I'll give you a personal example. I was good enough to play baseball at the collegiate level, but I was not good enough to get drafted and get stuck in the minor leagues for a long time. So I was good enough to get me into a better school than my grades would have allowed for. And that ended up giving me the opportunity to go to school right next to Greenwich, Connecticut, start working at Merrill Lynch and the rest is history, right? So had I been a better baseball player, I would have missed out on all those opportunities. So the whole everything happens for a reason. Why wasn't I a better baseball player? Why didn't I throw harder so that I got looks from the pros? Well, it's because my destiny was not to be lost in the minors, but to be a technical analyst or whatever, right? So like where, you know, and that's just my personal story and everybody has their own positive and negative ones. Like where does that all come into play? You draw, you, you, you hold a ball in your hand and you let it go and it falls towards the earth and it 
collides with the earth. That is just nature, right? Natural law, there's gravity. And it's the same thing. It just so happens that in many, in many bad things, there's a good thing that come out of it. Uh, there's a silver lining, uh, the yin and the yang, however you want to think about it. Good, good things come out of bad, bad things come out of good. You know, there's implications for everything. We pay attention to them. I'll give you another one. Give you another great one. We have this pandemic and it was awful. And many, you know, half a million people died in this country alone. Uh, we shut down a lot of commerce. Um, so many negatives, uh, you know, my kids didn't get to go to school much and, you know, they, 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 they're, they're suffering socially and, um, a lot of kids around, but there has been some good about it. There's, there's been a silver lining, right? There's less, uh, pollution, less commuting, higher quality of life. Four out of five CEOs are basically saying now that we're never, they're, they're never going to go back to uh, people commuting every day. And I used to do that commute into the city from outside the city, not every day, uh, but often. And I would get on that train early in the morning and I would just see people that were just like, you know, shadows of themselves. You know, they just look dead inside taking that long commute every day. So our quality of life uh, has a possibility to uh, improve even though so there's always going to be those goods and the bads. There's always going to be those bads and the goods. Is there a reason? I don't know. I mean, you know, you can, maybe you can explain to me how, why gravity works, but you know, is it a, is, is it a good enough explanation? Is it really, it's, 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 it's how it works, but is it really why, why is there gravity or why is there anything? So what do you tell people who, you know, cause you hear it all the time, like, well, everything happens for a reason. Oh, everything happens for a reason, like with like a smile on their face, like a very innocent, you know, like what there's people who say that that are listening. What, what do you tell them? You probably aren't going to change anybody's mind. Number one. Um, number two, whatever gets you through the night. It's all right. It's all right. John Lennon. So, you know, whatever your thing is, people believe all kinds of crazy things. I don't know. I don't know if it even matters if it, if it's if it if everything happened. I mean, you know, like what's the reason? You know what I mean? Like who knows? But there might as well be a reason. I mean, you could just you could just pretend there is. Hey, yeah, you know, happens for a reason. Sure. Is it a? It, it, it just it just like a comfort thing? Is it like a psychological thing that it makes it makes you it makes you sleep well at night? You know, thinking that this negative thing that happened is because of something positive that's going to come out like. Is it like sort of like um, a soothing mechanism to connect those dots? I have no idea why, but humans want to feel like they understand things and they want to be assured that everything's going to be okay. Those are two just, you know, those are two, uh, those are two items that, 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 that motivate and propel us for whatever reason. I have no idea why, but it just is over and over again. And so people want to feel like they have some control over their environment. Things are going to be okay. And, you know, if something happens and they, and they say to themselves, well, it happened for a reason. Uh, if they believe that, what's, you know, maybe there is a reason. I don't even know. Maybe there is a reason. Maybe there, you know, maybe there's a, maybe there's a God up there who is, uh, who is directing everything. And there is a reason. And it turns out that you get, you know, when it's all over, you get like a prize, you know, you get a, uh, like you, you know, you put a quarter in that gumball machine, you turn the handle, life is just turning that handle. And then, you know, whatever comes out, it could be like the gumball or it could be one of those like little toys that break right away. Who knows what you get? I have no idea, but you know, it doesn't seem like there's a reason, but we do want to believe there is. So whether it is or not, but I love the thing of the good and the bad and the bad and the good because it's just not. So everything is really just the way the world is. The world is the way it is. It's what it is. There's no there's no really great explanation why, uh, you know, do we even have to concern ourselves with it? <laughs> you know, like if somebody says to you, well, there's, you know, it happens for a reason. That, that's not a reason for an argument right there. You know what I mean? Like JC, me and you are thinking there's no reason, but if somebody says that to you, there's no, there's, there, there's no reason for us to question it or say, Oh, you know, no, there's not. 
We just <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 fine. Because what about like like so for example, I took a beating in in uranium stocks uh, a zillion years ago, a decade ago actually. This week uh, is when uh, the tsunami hit Fukushima, and I got crushed in these uranium stocks. And I learned, and and ever since then, that was the final sort of exclamation point on JC. The only thing that actually matters is managing risk. Like that's when it finally hit me. Like oh wow, that's the only thing that actually matters. Um, and, it, and that's what it hit me. And then every time I get stopped out of something and then it keeps getting crushed after that, or, you know, I, I limit a loss somehow that ended up would have been much worse had I not, I think back to that moment and I'll be like, wow, if I, if I hadn't experienced that miserable time, I wouldn't have been able to be disciplined this time. So that was the reason I suffered that pain. Or, you know, now that I have my wife and I love her very much and she's fantastic, how could I know that she's so wonderful and great and I want to spend the rest of my life with her if it wasn't for maybe past experiences I had when I was younger with other uh, experiences with females that, you know, right? Like, you know, that I did not have a good experience with and it was a, a bad experience and maybe it, it happened for a reason. So now I can appreciate other things, right? Like, is it is it wrong to look back at lessons learned and experiences learned and now make you appreciate certain things now? So we as animals, uh, aside from aspiring towards uh, moral, you know, sort of a natural moral moral law or natural morality, we also have this capacity to learn, which is fantastic. So we learn. But here's the thing, you know, there were great artists who would imagine a play within a play. You know, you've seen the Truman Show. Uh, Pirandello was a, a playwright. Shakespeare did it, right? There was a play, the play within a play. Uh, the play's the thing, Hamlet. Uh, we are like a play within a play, right? We're, we're these humans running around on this earth all of this drama is happening. We're learning all these, all these things. We have moral compasses. We have family. We have jobs. We have uh, everything is happening. That's just a play within this larger play, which is this, you know, giant universe that really doesn't care. There's where there's no reason, where it's just whatever's happening is happening. And so we're in this little microcosm or little bubble where there's all of these reasons that's great. That's fine. You know, if you, if, in fact, if you just, uh, if you just knew nothing about this outer universe, you know, if the earth was the center of the universe, which we used to think it was right. Um, if earth is the center of the universe, um, and we're not worrying about this, you know, huge entropic universe outside of the earth and the atmosphere, then sure, there's definitely a reason and that's fine. So what's the prescription? The prescription is to just live every day uh, the foot to the fullest and enjoy and do do your best anyway. You know, maybe there is there. You know, there was a uh, there was this great scene in an old Woody Allen movie where he thinks you he's say that anymore. Well, he was a great artist. The, you know, even if he's a scumbag, I don't know. But the art itself, I mean, uh, 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 Ezra Pound was an insane fascist. Van Gogh was a lunatic. I don't know. I mean, he was it, it, he made great paintings. Right. I, I, I don't I don't need that's a whole other episode. But, you know, I have no I have no moral take on on Woody Allen, the human. I don't know him. He made great art. But anyway, there was a uh, there was a scene. He was a hypochondriac and he thought he had a tumor. And he went to the uh, doctor and the doctor said, well, it looks like something's there. We have to do more tests. And he's just like about to, you know, he thinks the end of the world. And then he finds out uh, that he's OK, that he's totally fine. And he gets really, really, uh, really, really, uh, really ecstatic. And he says, you know, maybe there is no reason. Maybe the, the universe is, you know, oh, so he goes to a Marx Brothers movie. Right. And the Marx Brothers are hilarious and they're doing all these funny things on the on the screen. And he's just there thinking and you hear him talking and he's you know talking to himself. And he says, well, maybe there is no reason uh, to the universe, but we are here now. 
And we are, you know, the, the, the world is pretty amazing, right? We have love, we have uh, children, we have uh, ice cream, we have all of these, you know, we have great books, we have all of these amazing things to enjoy and we have feelings and we have thoughts and, 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 and all aspirations. So as long as we're here, whether there's any, mean, whether there, you know, whether outside of that bubble, there's any really greater meaning or not, you know, whether there is a, 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 a moral God or whether we're just a speck on a speck uh, spinning in a gargantuan entropic universe, uh, we might as well just make the most of it while we're here. I mean, we're not going to be here that long, so we might as well make the most of it while we're here. So, you know, it's like whether there's meaning or not, whether there's a reason or not to use, you know, your original question, we're here. So we might as well just make the most of it while we are here, whether there's reason or not. So if you like building bridges, go learn about building bridges. Dude, I love the bridges. And yes, if you love building bridges, build the bridges. If you love looking at charts, look chart, look at charts. You know, if you like doing wind sprints, go do wind sprints. Man, I did wind sprints last night with my dog. It was, it was cold out. It was amazing, dude. My legs ache today, but it was, it's like the most exhilarating feeling. You know why dogs run? You know, dogs get these things called the zoomies. Sometimes they like, you, you let them out or they go outside and they just run around in circles. You know, so doc, here's what the doctors say. They do it because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking love that shit right there. I love it. I love it, Phil. Listen, I, I I wanted to have this chat. I've been seeing it a lot. We had a, we had that conversation. I hear it all the time, and it kind of bugs me. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to ever say anything when I hear it. It's not worth it. We'll just keep it to ourselves. Maybe I'll point people to this podcast. How's that sound? Perfect. All right, Pearls. Love you, man. Adios. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Money Game with J.C. Peretz and Phil Perlman. For more on behavioral finance and investor psychology, check out allstarcharts.com slash podcast or search The Money Game on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. See you next time.